season two sides who have risen from the ashes do battle. Last season was a dismal one for both Warners Bay and Walls End. They won just seven matches between them from the 42 they played and things weren't looking good. But how things can change in just 12 months. In this short space of time both sides have turned things around dramatically. Warners Bay finished second and then disposed of last year's major and minor premiers Merriweather United at John Strait Oval last weekend to make the grand final. For Wall's End, they finished fourth and had the unenviable task of taking on the runaway minor premiers in the Adamstown Rosebuds, a side who had dismantled them not once but twice during the regular season, 6-2 and 4-0. They had no fear and it was they who would do the dismantling in the semi-final, winning the first leg 3-2 and the second 4-1 at a shocked Adamstown Oval. Two sides who have fought everything to be on the stage and what a moment awaits them. The chance to be WPL Premiers for the very first time. So enjoy the 2016 WPL Grand Final on the home of grassroots sport this afternoon. Bar TV. Joining me in commentary, we've got former Valentine coach Cass Wright and at current Adamstown W League player, WPL player, I should say, Emily Frost. And Emily, what a beautiful afternoon we've got this afternoon. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, um, the weather's perfect and they couldn't ask for better conditions for the afternoon, so hopefully it means that both teams can play at their best. And Cass, I'll go to you next. What are your thoughts on this afternoon's proceedings? Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Um, I think whoever dominates the central midfield and plays through to the forwards will uh, create the chances for scoring. Uh, a little bit too hot for me, <laughs> for the girls out there, but um, it'll challenge them, and especially towards the last 20 minutes of the um, full game. Yep, so... It is going to be. A, it is a very warm afternoon here at Western Rockwell Automation Park. Last year it was at Magic Park. It was a cold, wet afternoon when your Valentine went to battle. Totally opposite conditions this afternoon. Yeah, it was. It was um, actually suited us a little bit better to slow the Merriweather team down, and um, it was in our favour for the first half. So um, completely different this year. Nice for the girls. Nice pitch, and um, yeah, definitely played better football than it was uh, <laughs> last year. Now we'll come to the formations as soon as they kick off, but it's going to be Warners Bay running from right to left of screen in their predominantly maroon, maroon uh, jersey with the uh, blue sash, and then it'll be Walls End running from left to right in their predominantly white strip. Very similar to what Merriweather had last year and Merriweather's jersey. So we're just awaiting kick off here this afternoon. There's other score lines today in the 18's grand final. Thornton won 8-1. Incredible score line that one over Warners Bay. Adamstown beat Mid North Coast 1-0 and Wall South Walls End beat Mid North Coast 2-1 in the 14. So we're all set and ready and we're underway in the 2016 WPL grand final. Walls End kicking it off and it comes across now. Warners Bay with possession with uh, Smith and then goes down the line with uh, Maddie Smith playing it wide to Adriana Jones. She's going to be the key today for Warners Bay up front. 28 goals in 18 games in an early corner to Warners Bay. But Cass, how are the how are the sides lining up formation-wise this afternoon? Um, so we had Walls in there starting with a, a flat back four uh, going into um, two centrally and then four up front where uh, Warners Bay started off with the um, curriculum of 4-3-3 uh, with the a definite um, triangle there sitting in the middle, so um, maybe a bit defensive from the walls end first up. <laughs> to the corner from Warners Bay, whipped in by Jones towards the back post, has hit the bar and bounced away. It's a lucky chance there for Warners Bay coming off the bar. Here's Ellie Davis knocking it over towards Jones, but coming out and making a good grab there was Beck Saunders in goals for Walls End. Emily. What do you think these two sides are thinking right now? Early on, the, early on in the game, you need to be calm and composed, don't you? Yeah, I think at the start of the game, they'll both be trying to get a couple of shots early, get the nerves out, and definitely try and see if they can scare the keepers early into staying on their line or bringing them out. So definitely that corner was aimed straight on top of the keeper, trying to make her a little bit uncomfortable for today's game, I think. Beck Saunders in the end, doing a good job to get it away. The goalkeeper for Wall's End. Favourite player is Hope Solo. No surprises there. The US 
goalkeeper, the US women's goalkeeper. Recently, they were knocked out of the Olympics in the quarterfinals of the US women's team. A surprise there as his walls end across the ground. Playing it wide. They've been outstanding in attack this season. Have won as by 61 goals, equal with the first place Adamstown Rosebuds as the ball in towards the middle for Holcomb, who goes down and it's been given as a penalty, has it? Is it an early penalty for Walls End? It is. Well, can you believe that? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that one, Cass? Um, yeah, uh, a bit of 50-50 then. I think um, Corinne, unfortunately, just stepped over the top and it created a situation. But you can see Walls End um, definitely wanting the ball early and um, Warners Bay have to be on their toes and aware of that. So quick transition from, obviously, defence into attack and that's where they were be dangerous if they can do that constantly through the game. So here come Walls End, putting it straight, oh what a save from Nikki Dieter in goals, Libby Copas, Brown couldn't get it past her, and drama early on in the WPL Grand Final, a fantastic save, how much confidence is that going to give Warners Bay? Oh, I think that's going to give them huge confidence, saving a pen definitely is going to lift the team, that's for sure. So we're going to throw for Walls End over there. Alex Munro is going to take it. Walls End across the back. Adriana Jones with the interception goes to Cass Davis. Cass Davis playing it through. Charging after the ball down that far side of the ground with Sass Seaborn. And it's over for another corner. Now, Cass, I'm interested to ask you, you had Cass Davis last year at Valentine. She's played 20 matches this year. Only the eight goals. It's surprising that she hasn't got on the score sheet more often. Does that yeah. surprise you? No, actually, because when you look at when she plays for the W League Jets, she actually sits in a defensive mid midfield role. So um, she has the potential to move forward, but I think she's just used to being sitting and maybe in a holding defence rather than it an, in attacking midfield role. So if she did, then, yeah, definitely goals will come. Uh, but it depends on how Leon wants to sit her in this game to whether well she'll play that attack. She's up in the attack now, so um, we could see where Nardi would normally sit in a defensive role for that midfield. Yeah, I was interested. I was thinking whether, you know, you, you'd know whether uh, or where she does play and whether that is a surprise seeing her only have the eight goals this season. She scored plenty for Valentine last year, but this season with Adriana Jones up front, yeah. she hasn't yeah. had a, a, as big a role. Yeah, it comes more a distribution role rather than an actual turn and, and, and hit. Um, but when Cass does get a hold of it, she can play left or right foot. So um, for her advantage there, she can turn on the ball at any time and, and, and score. So... Depends where her confidence sits too. Yeah. So Warner's Bay, this is a field position. Really, it's been Warner's Bay who have controlled the opening part of the match. Just the penalty chance for Walls End's the only time they've been down the Warner's Bay defensive end of the ground. It's going to be a free kick going Warner's Bay. It looks like it's going to be. Uh, Nadia Squire is going over to take it. The number five for Warners Bay. Played at Valentine last season. Scored against Walls End in round 11. And a 3-2 win they had over them. Knocks it towards Saunders who punches it away. Comes back to Smith whose shot was straight at Saunders. She made a good save. Taylor Smith and Maddie Smith. Both in this side this afternoon. Sisters for Warners Bay. Actually, twins, Maddie and Taylor Smith. It's interesting because it's a last name. You wouldn't necessarily expect them to be sisters going on Smith. Being such a very common name. Yeah, they're very good sports people, the Smith twins. Started out playing netball. They only started playing soccer about the age of 11. And we see a wide ball here. And it goes back to uh, Dita. But back onto the Smith, as you were saying. Yeah, so they only started playing soccer about the age of 11. And pretty much any sport they turn their hand to, they're talented, the two of them. And Jenna Kingsley may have copped one in the head here. She scored two goals last weekend against Adamstown. Against your side, Emily, was she brilliant up front? She scored three in the two semi-final games against you guys. Yeah, I think she's definitely a very um, dangerous player when she's able to take the, f obviously she's right-footed, but takes the ball inside as well as down the line and just lethal finishes. Definitely. 
So Warners Bay play on from the free kick. Victoria Campbell goes back to Dieter in goal, who wasn't too happy with the ball back, actually. He, clearance wasn't fantastic, and now Cass Davis just reefs it up the ground. Smith looking over the top for Adriana Jones. Now getting a, a boot in here is Sass Seaborn, who's another one of the players that scored against Walls End earlier in the season. And Walls End are going to come away with possession. And this time... Lauren Hall with the ball, Laura Hall I should say with the ball. And back across for Hall. You can see uh, Wall's end possession is quite strong and as long as they maintain that possession then I think their um, opportunities will, will come. Um, Waters Bay may get a little frustrated if they don't have the ball and create those attacking options for AJ up front. But it'll be interesting battle between uh, Ash Jones and AJ in this uh, will get in there for sure and um, make sure AJ's working for it. Here's an interception from Kingsley. We said how important she's going to be for Walls End this afternoon. She gets outside Tori Campbell. Still going Kingsley and she's just scuffed across there and put over the sideline by Warners Bay. Kingsley not as prolific as Adriana Jones. She's only scored 21 goals in 20 games. Still not a bad effort at all. And it's uh, really good to see all the emerging Jets come back into the WPL program as well as a couple of the WLA girls so um, it's actually made the competition I think a little bit more stronger and even throughout the clubs this year and it was good to see that they've actually uh, come in rather than uh, go to Sydney and um, it helps with the younger girls coming through as well. The Emerging Jets playing in the Sydney competition that's that's right Are they, they've yes, moved down yeah. there. Yep they're in the uh, New South Wales equivalent of our WPL. They did win the competition not too long ago, the Emerging Jets. Just check my uh, my research back in 2014. They got the job done 5-2 over Adamstown. So Beck Saunders with the goal kick. Play to juniors at Madawi. Goes out towards Adriana Jones. And turning on the ball and free kick goes the way of Walls End now. We have had an issue here with the team sheet. The number seven, Killy Gawthrop, normally wears ten, but she's wearing the seven, the captain, today. As here's Adriana Jones almost down this near sideline. Going back for Hunter. Just turns it to Ashley Jones. Cass Davis looking for, through for Adriana Jones. The hands went up for the offside, but she was definitely onside on that occasion. She's got Seaborn in the middle. Jones gets flattened after she put the cross in, and it's over for just the goal kick, I think, for Beck Saunders. Opening exchanges in the WPL Grand Final of 2016. Two sides that haven't played in a WPL Grand Final before in Warners Bay and Walls End. Now, Emily, Walls End will might come back to it just after Maddie Smith's ball cleared over the sideline there by Laura Hall. The loss at the back for Walls End. Lisa Cochran, she was playing in the centre back role for much of the year. She's uh, not playing this afternoon. How big a loss is she going to be for the, Warners, the Walls End girls, I should say? I think she's a big loss. Um, she's played centre back most of the season. Um, she's over in Perth at the moment representing the state. And Calista Hunter seems to have stepped in and done a reasonable job. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, communication is between Calista and Sophie to make sure they can definitely keep AJ quiet as much as possible. Just over 11 minutes gone in the first half. This WPL Grand Final over towards the sideline and Walls End with the throw. Here's Gawthrop. Adamstown Rose by Junior. Keely Gawthrop and then Seaborn. Has it all nicked off her. Runs back over to this near side and put down the line. Holcomb. towards Jenna Kingsley. On that occasion couldn't rein it in. Libby 
Copus Brown with that early penalty for Walls End. Couldn't convert. Nicky Dieter with a fantastic save. Here's Gawthrop. Now Cass Davis on the break for Warners Bay. Ashley Jones gets the boot in. It'll be an interesting matchup between uh, Keely Grawthorpe and Cass Davis in that midfield. Definitely who can dominate early. It'll definitely help dictate how the game's going to run. Here's Kingsley with a chance. Steps inside Campbell. Now plays it through to Grawthorpe as Grawthorpe's put it wide. What a chance there for Keely Grawthorpe. They've had some good chances early on of Walls and Cass. Yeah, and again, the build out with the ball to the feet, um, making sure that they're running inside and they're waiting for that run um, for them to come in. So I think, again, possession's going to play the key. Like you said, that middle matchup between um, the two central midfields will be interesting. Um, Walls in, though, I think they've got three out of the four in the back line of the emerging Jets. So um, while Lisa's out, I think if they click into their normal game mode, then they'll, um, they should be able to hold. I think Adriana was just about to be called offside on that last run before. Yeah, she does get caught offside a bit, does Adriana Jones. Last week in the first half, she was caught off plenty of times against Merriweather. Coming inside and cleared up towards the, up towards the sideline by Kruper, but it's I had to run on Seaborn. Caused some headaches early on at the front for Warners Bay. Kingsley putting some pressure on the back of Warners Bay. Jones with a touch on to Davis, who shanks her ball. And a run back to Saunders in goals. Here's Gawthrop getting away from Davis. Well, there you go, Emily. She's won that little battle with Cass Davis in Keeley Gawthrop. Yeah, I think it's one all Cass dispossessed uh, Keeley earlier, so I think it won't be uh, any love lost between those two today. Here's Kingsley, Toria Campbell with a good tackle down there and over the sideline. Inside the opening, we're just outside the opening 14 minutes now. I'm just trying to think who's had the best chances. We've had Walls End with the penalty for Libby Copas Brown and then Keely Gawthrop with that shot just going wide. But then also early on, Warners Bay with the corner that thumped into the crossbar. So both sides very willing this afternoon. And the stat that really surprised me was Warners Bay have won two and drawn one with... Here's the header. It's almost gone across the line. It was almost an own goal, I think, for Warners Bay. We'll come back to that statistic in a second but they've played three times this season round four round 11 and round 18 in round four it was a one all draw round 11 warners bay won three two and round 18 warners bay won three one over walls end so it's uncharted territory for walls end in terms of getting the job done over warners bay there's cass davis gets a boot in comes back out for jones towards gawthrop Jones again, this time off the side of the boot, Dieter couldn't get to it. Was there a handball? There wasn't, there was a foul, and it's going to be a free kick to Nikki Dieter. Well, that, that could have been anything there, Cass. Yeah, it was. Um, I think the keeper for Warners Bay is definitely keeping him in the game so far. She's made some great saves. Um, and yeah, that, that could have been anyone's in the end. It was uh, a free kick to Warners Bay. But the pressure's definitely on with the ball's end, wanting to win that ball. We see another free kick going the way of Warners Bay. I wasn't quite sure what that was for, just a, maybe a small foul that referees picked up. 25 years of age, the Warners Bay goalkeeper, Nikki Dieter. Formerly has played for Glasgow City Football Club in Scotland, so she's got some experience behind her. Here's Maddie Smith. Lays it into legs, into Copus Brown. The line towards Kingsley again, Cass Davis. Still Davis, just holding onto the ball and then playing it. And there was Gawthrop with the interception. Watching each other like Hawks this afternoon. Gawthrop and Cass Davis. Now played back to Dieter there by Krupa. Dieter back to Krupa. Some pressure here on her. And now up the line. 
for Smith. Northrop comes across with the pressure. Now Davis into legs. Hopeless Brown. Both sides with very experienced midfields. You look at Cass Davis and Nadia Squires for uh, Warners Bay. And you've got Gawthrop and Libby Copas Brown for Walls End. Crucial players out there for both sides where it matters. Here goes Shannon Day down the far side. Steps inside and out. Gets away from Davis and then her cross. Both sides crossing has let them down in the opening 15 minutes of this one this afternoon and it'll just go over harmlessly for a goal kick. Yeah, I think Shannon Day, you'll definitely have to be very um, hard on her because she has quite good footwork and quite often down that left wing, she normally would whip a ball in and she causes quite a few headaches down that left side. It was a poor start to the season for Warners Bay. They didn't win in the opening three rounds. Not terrible. They lost to Merriweather 3-0. Adamstown 5-1. The manner of those defeats was probably what worried a few people at Warners Bay as Dita will come out and grab that. Then they had a draw with, uh, with Walls End, a one-all draw. So not a great start to the season for them, but since then, it's been an outstanding run of form. They've lost just one of their last 12. Their only loss was a 4-2 defeat to South, South Walls End. Now, South Walls End came home really strong at the back end of the season. They might have finished in fifth place on the ladder, but they had a great finish. Yeah, and a lot of those girls on the pool group were actually uh, your Valentine um, from last year. So once again, they clicked together and they lost a few uh, early players. So you've got um, Stacey Day and Hannah Brewer actually signed up. So um, Stacey did her, her other knee um, just before commencement of the season and then Hannah decided not to play due to commitments. So um, if those two players had come in, they would have been extremely competitive within the, within the, the teams in the clubs. We've got a few shout outs today. I've got um, uh, Greg Lowe, who coached the Valentine girls two years ago. He's in South Africa running an academy over there. Um, we've got Ant, who's actually the manager for Canberra W League, and his team is the uh, Blue Devils that won and have been premiers for six years. We've also got the Warners Bay under 12 girls and um, the Macquarie Sap girls are shouting out. So all of those who um, definitely watch and contribute to women's football. So I did a shout out for uh, Australia and worldwide today. Th thanks so much for that, Cass. In terms of the WPL, hopefully there's uh, some more coverage next year in terms of each week. I'm not 100% sure what is going on next year with the, with the coverage. Uh, I'll have to leave that to the, uh, the executive committee at Bar TV to decide that. But uh, hopefully that, uh, that will be uh, broadcast next year, a game around. We'll see what happens. Cass Davis is going to stand over the free kick. It's going to be Nadia Squires to take it. She drills it low and hard. Gee, that was a good free kick from Nadia Squires. And Beck Saunders with a good save. She'll throw it out wide here to Ashley Jones. Probably not a good idea for Jones to go back as Adriana Jones. Same uh, last name. Was waiting there for the ball. As here's Sophie O'Brien at the back. Going across the ground to Munro. Squires comes across and will intercept. Well, then just seemed to be uh, over the last five minutes, seemed to turning the ball over a little bit cheaply, like not hitting feet when they should be. Wars Bay definitely are trying to capitalise down that left wing through um, Maddie Smith and AJ. So hopefully Wars Bay can settle into the game, start playing like they normally would, and hit some feet and start passing the ball around. Here is the chance for Walls End charging through and almost getting an early chance was uh, Holcomb. Holcomb with the cross towards the back post. Charging down there is Shannon Day and Ellie Davis with the pressure on her. Still Shannon Day under pressure from Taylor Smith and Ellie Davis. And it's over for a Walls End throw. These two sides we mentioned pre-game, last and second last, last season. Walls End finishing seventh and Warners Bay eighth. And this season, they're gonna fight it off to see who is the world. I'm, I'm not gonna say that, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say when, you, when you've got a minor premiership as well, but uh, you could say one of the best sides of the season. 
this afternoon. There's Hornets Bay with some defensive work. It is always a hard one with, with the minor premiership and the major premiership. In football, you always think the minor premiers are the best side across the season. And then you've got the grand final to decide the best side that really comes home strong at the back end of the season. And if you can do both, that's an outstanding achievement. Yeah, I think um, definitely Wall's End have clicked at the right time with Pete. They're, you know, the way they clicked against, especially our team the last couple of weeks, they've demonstrated some amazing form coming into these finals. And Warners Bay, like it's not easy to topple the minor and major premiers from last year. So I think both teams definitely just demonstrated how much of a different game finals football is. And they showed the heart and desire when it mattered most. Yeah, I think that's the important thing. You've just got to look at it. It's a different competition once you enter the finals. Doesn't matter where you finished, you've got to do it all again. And as I, as I said before, if you can if you can win the minor premiership and do the job in the grand final, it just shows what an outstanding side you are and what an outstanding side you have. As Merriweather did last year in the WPL and as Edgeworth did in the NPL last season. Shannon Day is back to Gawthrop. And now Wall's End. Brought across, Cass Davis almost intercepting it from Laura Hall. Gawthrop again. But Cass just, just getting a little bit scrappy now in the, the middle here as we see a break here for Warners Bay. We'll come back to that. Here's Seaborn. Good tackle from Callista Hunter and Beck Saunders comes out and grabs it. But it's yeah. I won't say scrappy, but in a bit of an arm wrestle now. Yeah, and that's it. It'll, it'll be the players tussle against each other rather than, okay, let's let's fall to feet. Let's look for those angles and movement off the ball and um, there's probably a bit of niggle out there, I guess. Um, so the players will be just uh, a little bit off their football. Uh, AJ getting a warning. So, yeah, once they start, like you said before, once they start playing football, um, you'll see a different change of the game. Yeah, Adriana Jones, not very impressed there, having a chat to the referee. And we have a uh, welcome Craig Beans in the uh, spectators today, so our double A coach, and who recently also took the young Matildas uh, for some major qualifiers. So um, I'm sure he'll be interested to see how the girls go out here today. And you said young Matildas. I was going to say, speaking of the Matildas, an outstanding performance in Brazil, as uh, Maddie Smith. Oh, she's taken down on the edge of the penalty area, and we are going to see a yellow card come out for Hunter. It definitely wasn't a penalty, but it's right on the edge of the area. And we have a chance. I'll come back to the Matildas there. An outstanding performance in Brazil, um, going down the penalty shootout to the host nation. And the, the goalkeeper, the Brazilian goalkeeper, was not on her line at all, at all. It was blowing up at the TV. Yeah, I think that's a bone of contention with a lot of Aussie supporters <laughs> at the moment. Seems to be the hot topic going around. But, I mean, they performed really well over in Brazil and, you know, credit to them. Four years of hard work and has definitely paid off and it's just great to see them performing on the world stage. Well, if this free kick from Nadia Squires is just as good as the last one, it's going to put Beck Saunders and the Walls End defence under some pressure. It goes towards Cass Davis at the back post, just couldn't reel it in there. And now with Copus Brown over the top for Munro. Did she get a touch on if she had off? Holcomb was away, but Ellie Davis is there. Almost found Seaborn. And now Smith, all deflecting around all over the place for a moment. Now Copus Brown playing it over the top for Kingsley. She's not going to have the pace. We know she's quick, but she's not going to have the pace to reel that in. What, two goals against Warners Bay this season. She scored in the one-all draw in round four they had and the 3-1 loss in round 18. And as I mentioned, three goals in the last two matches in the finals. And you see, you've seen in the, in the previous two semi-final, the first and second legs, the big players on both of these two sides, Jenna Kingsley, for Wall's End and Adriana Jones for Warners Bay standing tall. So there's a header going over the top. Terea Campbell with the header away and Holcomb just can't get a shot on target. Scuffs it wide. It's interesting to see um, Bryony Holcomb and Jenna Kingsley normally are playing a lot closer together and try and flip on the ball to each other. It seems a bit like Wall's End are trying to play the long ball over the top and try and hit 
So it'll be interesting to see what would happen if they started to play Bryony into feet and see if she could flick the ball onto Kingsley a little bit more like they normally would. But I think that's also probably just grand final nerves and once they settle it down, it'll be a better game. O'Brien's got Adriana Jones coming into her back and O'Brien decides, no, nope, she's going to win the free kick. I don't think Adriana Jones will be too pleased about that. Over near the Walls End fans over down in the far corner. Here at uh, Rockwell Automation Park this afternoon. There was a big crowd of Walls End fans at Adamstown Oval last weekend and another big turnout for them playing in the new FM in the men's competition and the grand finalist this season as Adriana Jones is offside. a bingo for that. I think uh, you'd get that very quickly, Adriana Jones being offside in the grand final. And I think it's as a striker you're bound to get a couple of offside calls, especially early on in the game where you're trying to figure out where the defenders are going to set up and where their line's going to be. Here we go, Jones trying to time a run again. It goes across from Davis to Seaborn. Deflects off feet and Seaborn keeps it in nicely. She's got Jones at the back post. Still Seaborn. Is this the moment for Warners Bay? Still Seaborn. Somehow cleared away. Taylor Smith gets it stuck under her foot. And Walls End, can they clear it away? Well, they're not going to clear it away. The Jude referee is getting a little bit whistle happy of late. A lot of free kicks going the way of Walls End. Yeah, and I think that there's a fine balance, but un unless she gets the game under control, it could become a little bit. Uh, it's so hard as a referee, isn't it? You just got to have that fine line. Definitely. This is Kingsley with it. And that's what uh, I think Walls End are trying to do. They're trying to play that ball in between the two defenders for, for Kingsley to run onto. Um, and they weren't doing that before. And like you said, better ball to feet and then look for that ball rather than the uh, speculator. Here's Copus Brown dodging and weaving and playing it to Holcomb. Holcomb trying to square it back. Well cleared out in the end by Krupa. And now Smith to Seaborn. Sliced over towards the sideline by uh, O'Brien, who's actually got four on her pants and six on her back. So <laughs> that's very confusing from Sophie O'Brien. Normally wears the number four, so I'm not sure what has happened there. As here's Jones playing it wide to Smith. Could she run this down, Taylor Smith? She could, and plays it into Alice Munro and over for a corner. In the second half, Walls End, they'll be running down this end. They score a goal right in front of their fans. It'll uh, be very enjoyable to watch. So it's Adriana Jones on the corner again. And it looks like Squires is wanting it at the back here. So we'll see where she actually gets it into. And yep, that's where... Yeah, it is. It is to a Squires. Saunders again, it's almost hit the bar. You wouldn't get that in 10 games, corners hitting the bar, and we've pretty much had it happen twice this afternoon. Here's Jones and Munro. Shoulder to shoulder, Jones wins that little battle. Alice Munro comes back at her. Now Copus Brown comes across and gets a boot in. It's over for another corner. But Warners Bay, gee, they've had a lot of corners. Yeah, they have, but uh, Walls End in that second man defence has been covering them. So they, whilst they uh, haven't actually won the ball, they've turned it out for a corner each time. So. It's been pretty even in terms of field position, but a lot of corners Warners Bay's way. Here they're the Squires. Davis also there. Saunders couldn't run. Seaborn's put it in, I think. She has, and Warners Bay have the lead in the grand final. It was scrappy. Saunders couldn't grab it, and it's 1-0. Oh, the miscommunication between Munro and Saunders. So Walls End are going to have to come from behind if they want to get their first victory in the WPL. And they're quickly up there, ready to take the kickoff. Jones labouring back. Great corner ball there. It's just that pressure, isn't it? Yeah. And ladies' toilets are re have reopened. Oh, celebrations at Rockwell Automation Park. I wasn't sure what they had the issue with. We've got a change here for Warners Bay. Kelly Lewis is coming on for um, Sass Seaborn there. So scores the goal and goes off. It's been all happening this afternoon at Rockwell Automation Park. We've had penalty saves. We've had corners hitting the post. We've had the ladies' toilets out of action. <laughs> 
man. Well, what have we been going? It's been just over half an hour gone from the afternoon of action. As the ball deflects towards Kingsley. Well, that was incredible. Torea Campbell out of position. And now Squires in the middle. Calm on the ball. She gave away a penalty last week. Nadia Squires against Merriweather. Laurie Depchinski put that wide. That was a huge moment in the match. Would have made it one all in the second half. Here's Smith. Great tackle from Alice Munro. Deflected powerfully towards Ellie Davis. It just goes over the top to her sister, Cass. And doing some good defensive work. The back was uh, Walzen's Callista Hunter. Smith goes to Davis. Down in the corner. Trying to win a corner, you'd think, here. It's Cass Davis. Alice Munro getting her boot in. And it's going to be a throw to Warner's Bay. Down in the corner. In front of the Devil's Playground. Walls end spectators. Here come Warner's Bay. Running backwards. And now with Squires. She has a long-range shot, and it's going to be a free kick towards him. But Nadia Squire, she's so calm on the ball. Cass, you'd know her very well, coaching her at Valentine. Very calm and composed, isn't she? Yeah, uh, Nadia has the, the great composure and, and the ball at your feet skills. Um, unfortunately, when she's rattled, that all goes out the window sometimes, and um, her, her composure tends to rush the ball forward. So once she's got that, yep, she'll definitely beat any player 1v1. She just has vision and, and can send it to players' feet quite easily. So the way these two sides got into the finals, Warners Bay, they finished in second. So the two-league semi-final system, they played third. Here's a run from Kelly Lewis, intercepted. Might come back to those. We've got some end-to-end -end action for a moment. Here's Smith, plowing it through the middle. Yeah, so War Warners Bay got there, second versus third. They played Merriweather, who finished third. And here's a long shot from Callie Lewis. Just goes to the right-hand side of the goal. So it was a one-all first leg draw at Adam San Oval in the weeknight match. And then 2-0, the second leg. Warners Bay won to win that 3-1 on aggregate. And for Wall's End, 3-2. They won the first leg against Adamstown, a late, late goal. And then... 4-1 the second leg. Sorry, Emily, to have to put you through it again. 4-1 after leading 1-0 at halftime, Adamstown, last weekend. Yeah, I just don't think we came out of the sheds at halftime, to be perfectly honest. Beck Saunders just pushes it away. And over the sideline, yeah, 7-3 on aggregate in the end. Now, just on to this, this one this afternoon. Warner Bay get another one here. You sense it. They could get a few, and that confidence flows. Walls yeah. in really, really need the next goal this afternoon. We know it's important when you're down to get a goal, but this afternoon more so than ever. Yeah, and I think, especially since once Warner's Bay get a goal, the whole team just lives. You can see it in the way they're playing now. They're playing for each other. They've definitely settled down. They know they're in front. They know they just have to keep playing feet, keep playing football, and if they have the ball, then Walls End can't really touch them. Here's Kelly Lewis with a touch on to Cass Davis. And now Callista Hunter trying to get back Jones. And then Beck Saunders did well. Grabbed the ball from Jones' feet. But since that goal from Warners Bay, they have totally dominated field position. Walls end. It, this is a this is the biggest pitch, I'm pretty certain, in the NPL. This is a big pitch. And it's been Warners Bay down there in their end. So it's a long road down the other end for Walls End. And here's Kingsley. I thought that was a handball. Referee waves it away. Well. Probably unfortunate for Walls End there. Here's Campbell looking for Jones. Well controlled by O'Brien, but it went straight to Lewis and a huge chance for Warners Bay now. Here it goes across to Taylor Smith. Smith, she takes her time and Beck Saunders parries it away and dives on top of it. That's a big moment for Beck Saunders. She didn't have one of the best moments when Sass Seaborn scored the goal this afternoon, but a great stop there. And here's She's a very confident goalkeeper, Beck Saunders. I think she'll have to be really careful on how she parries the ball today because Warners Bay are just pouncing on everything. So they need to be really, really confident saves and make sure that um, she's got that ball under control. Well, how big does that penalty miss, or not miss, but the save from Dieter? Same now for Walls End and Warners. 
Bay this afternoon. If you're just joining us, an early penalty, well saved by Dieter. And then it was Sasseburn born who scored not long ago to make it 1-0 to Warners Bay this afternoon. There's Coppice Brown. Back to Alice Munro. It was a to and fro grand final last year. Merriweather got in front. Valentine pulled them back. Merriweather got in front again. Valentine pulled them back. It was two all and then Merriweather got in front again. So could that be the storyline for this afternoon? Walls then are going to need the next goal. Down in the corner, Ashley Jones under pressure. And put in towards Holcomb now. Smith hoofs it up the ground. O'Brien drops back over the top to Hunter. What do you think Mark Hin Hingston's thinking right now, Cass? Just um, he's just made, he's seeing who's got control of the ball and, and where the players can create that uh, situation where it's 2v1 for Walls in up the front. Where at the moment, uh, Warners Bay are heavily defending, so it's just an opportunity which they've created now. Here's Holcomb, steps inside the diving tackle and then goes inside the near post and Nikki Dieter's there to make a fantastic save. Almost sneaking inside a near post but she was awake to it. And Holcomb, she's been a menace for the Warners Bay defence. Gawthrop yeah. turns it over. I don't think Mark would be uh, too worried about being one down but uh, not in a comfortable position for a grand final where anything can happen anyway. So. As we've mentioned previously, they haven't beaten Warners Bay this season. One all draw, three. Five minutes of this half will, will is crucial to any game. Um, if there's time that they'll score, it'll be within that last five to ten minutes of half. Would you say Walls End are a fitter side than Warners Bay? Um, I, th I think a little bit. Uh, if you look at the majority of players, um, the Walls End girls are... are rotating between two and three at the back and the overlapping runs on the outsides. We positions are your two and five, respectively, um, and they're still getting back. So w when you look at it that, um, as, you, as you can see now, Warners Bay are very flat. Um, they're back four. And if they wanted to create that overload, then that's where it should come from. Yep. Yeah, one old Again, Leo might be looking at them wanting to play defensive and park the bus <laughs> for the last ten minutes. I was thinking you were going to say he's going to park the bus for the rest of the match. I'm thinking, please don't say that. Okay, just, just to, to take that lead into half time. <laughs> Here's Nadia Squires. Puts her boot through it. Ricochets away to Gawthrop, who couldn't control. Back for Squires. Steps away from Jenna Kingsley. And then dispossessed by Bonnie Holcomb. I was just saying before, so one all, a one all draw, a 3-2 win and a 3-1 win for Warners Bay this year against Walls End. And today they lead it 1-0. Up towards Callie Lewis. Callie Lewis has been very threatening up front for Warners Bay ever since she's come on for the goal scorer, Sass Seaborn. Yeah, I think she had an injury concern in the semi-final leg. Um, she dislocated shoulder, I'm pretty sure, in the first leg of the semi-final. So I think they probably would have liked to start her. But, I mean, when you have someone like Callie Lewis come on for someone as strong as South Seaburn, like it, it's really good to see that they have the options up front to be able to keep those creative opportunities going in that final third. She played for the Emerging Jets the last two seasons. That's why she's looking so strong up front, Callie Lewis. Also, in the player information I've been given, I've got has really small feet for a tall person. So there you go. Get some interesting stuff. Here's Adriana Jones on the run for Warners Bay. She's got Taylor Smith, who had that shot before. Probably a little bit heavy. It does run here at Rockwell Automation Park towards the middle. Jones with a header. Back for Maddie Smith. Oh, Jesus almost deflected in. Calista Hunter breathes a sigh of relief, and I think all the Walls End fans on that far side did too. Looking into the sun. Yeah, Kalisa seems to have done a really good job. She slotted into that centre-back position perfectly, and the talk is obviously there between her and Soph, so hopefully they can 
keep strong. Wolves End seem to be getting a little bit more possession, but they really need to keep hitting feet and make sure that they're keeping as much of the ball as they can. Cass and not Davis. giving away too many corners. Cass Davis got her back heel to that, but it's well cleared by Wolves End. It's pretty even for the opening 25 or so, and then Warners Bay grabbed the goal off the corner. That's been mostly played down Warners Bay's attacking end or Walls End's defensive end. This is a run down the far side looking towards Kingsley in the middle was Holcomb. Comes back out for Copus Brown. Across to Jones. And now back across to Gawthrop from Hall. Gawthrop has a try from distance. It did bounce low off the turf. Dita takes it down low and takes it down well. She's been outstanding for Warners Bay in this first half. Although I've said Warners Bay with much of the possession in the last five to ten minutes, Walls End have had their chances and she's made some fantastic saves. For sure. Um, I think uh, the keeper for Walls End um, did a good job on that end and then back down the other end. So the tr transition is actually starting to take effect now. The Warners Bay keeper was telling them to get out, and as you can see, they're just a uh, bit flat-footed. As you, as Cass had no one to pass it to, Kelly, Kelly still sitting, and um, only two running through. So now, now's the crucial time. Um, whoever's going to push that little bit harder to go through to score a goal will uh, definitely be in front for this half-time break. Another back heel from Holcomb sideline for a Warners Bay throw. This season, Warners Bay, home or away, doesn't matter where they've been, they've won six, drawn one, and lost two matches, both home and away, so equally as good wherever they play, Warners Bay, and that gives them some confidence coming up here. For Walls End, they won five of nine at home this season, four of nine away from home, so just marginally better at at home, although their home ground did change regular. They played at the Gardens, they played at Walls End Oval, just about everywhere. And here's Adriana Jones. Back to Smith. And they go down, goes down a little bit of a collision there with Hall, and it's over for another Warners Bay corner. Just repeating those earlier scores, Warners went down 8-1 in the 18s to Thornton. Adamstown beat Mid-North Coast 1-0 in the 16s and in the 14s. South Walls end beat Mid-North Coast 2-1. Second year in a row they've gone down in the 14s Mid-North Coast. Bit disappointing for them again this afternoon. It is a very big pitch for 14s here at Rockwell Automation Park. Huge pitch. Here's Nadia Squires. Tries a luck again from distance. Hall with the block. And now Munro, she's done plenty of work on that far side. And the ball just bring her down on that occasion and over for a throw for opposite and, number. And you've seen the swap there where Kingsley swapped sides um, and now in the historic 11 position and Dana sitting, Shannon Day sitting in behind us. So they were trying to create an opportunity there. Obviously they couldn't get through Victoria Campbell on this side and um, they've switched sides. So it'll be interesting to see how they come back out. Yeah, the second half. So that is half time here at Rockwell Automation Park, the 2016 edition of the Women's Premier League Grand Final, sponsored by the Herald. Now, Cass, I want to first ask you, what were your thoughts on that overall first half? Overall, um, obviously, the first five minutes, still trying to find their feet, came into their game, more then looked the stronger team, then it, and it quickly switched uh, when obviously we had the hit the post. And then we come back and it swapped sides and had a penalty for Walls End. And then finally, um, Warners Bay came over the top. And um, as we were talking before, whoever takes the, the game to play for defeat on the ground will dominate. And that's when Warners Bay scored. So, um, yeah, it's pretty even, I think. Um, it'll be interesting to see in the second half. And Emily, last weekend, same score line. Walls End were down 1 0 to you guys. And they came out and put the cleaners through in the second half. Was it similar? Was it very similar to last weekend, the, how the match panned out in this first half? I know you're on the field. Yeah, it's probably a little bit different <laughs> what I perceive the game to be as to what everyone else saw. But I think Warners Bay definitely in the last 20 minutes of that half, they were dominating the possession. Once they scored that goal, you could just see that they lifted. But Walls End, 
under Marquis and are definitely known for their fighting spirit. They often come out of that shed and they'll be firing, they'll be ready to go. And they are one of the fittest teams in the comp. Um, Mark does a great job in pre-season. We can never say that any of his teams aren't fit. Well, going to be an interesting second half. Half time at Rockwell Automation Park. It's Warners Bay 1, Sass Seaborn with the goal. Walls end nil.
Bosley. Back to Jones and then Hunter. Allows it through towards Bryony Holcomb. Still Holcomb stabbing it through for Kingsley again. Long range shot. She puts it wide. Nikki Deeds are having to move a little bit there. But Jenny Kingsley maybe a little bit of frustration with the long range shot. Yeah, I think it definitely got in ahead the past few times when she's tried to run it in one-on-one -on -one against Dita that it wasn't working, so tried the long range effort, but the execution just wasn't there. It's been walls in with most of the chances in the last 15 minutes of this one. Almost ticking towards the 70 minute mark as Casey Smith down towards the sideline and Warners Bay with the throw. Cass, do you think there's a goal for Wolves End this afternoon? I think if they keep creating the chances that they are now and the support for uh, Jenna when she's making those runs is there, uh, definitely. Um, they want to win and they'll come back. They know they're known for coming back. So um, as long as they get those balls to feet and controlling that part of their game, then, yep, definitely. And they're only just missing on that final pass in that front third. So if they do manage to go Wall's End and it does finish one all or does finish level, we will go into extra time. Uh, Craig was uh, a little bit excited if it was going to go to Penn, so <laughs> a, long a long way to go the to get there, though. There is, there is a, a very long way to go. Jenna Kingsley. I'm just checking the WPL Grand Finals. I don't think there has been one to go to penalties. There hasn't in the seven seasons that have been played. No grand final, grand finals going to penalties. I wasn't 100% sure about extra time, but from what I've seen, it doesn't look to be there has been one going to extra time. And some interesting grand final winners down the years. We see the goal kick go to Nikki Dieter. Broadmeadow Magic, 2-0 over Cardiff in 2009. Edgeworth Eagles, 1-0 over Valentine Phoenix in 2010. 2011, Valentine beat Broadmeadow 3-2. 2012, Adamstown, 6-1 over Lake Macquarie. 2013, Adamstown, 4-3 over Lake Macquarie. 2014, Emerging Jets 5, Adamstown 2, and then last year Merriweather 3-2 over Valentine. So Adamstown with some big wins there. They've been the most successful club in grand finals with the two wins. As Kingsley goes back to Jones and over the sideline. Hasn't quite reached the entertaining heights of last year's grand final, I must say, Cass. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think the, the pace has definitely slowed now, uh, whether the girls are just a little bit tired from that heat today. It is a lot hotter today than what it was last year. Definitely. And um, I think the physical battle will just start to kick in where we might see some tired legs and um, opportunity for the opposing team that, does, that still has their legs. As we mentioned, the big field is going to cause some issues late on in terms of fitness. And that's where the ball to feet playing through um, it definitely makes a difference if they're going to continue just to make those speculators then, yeah, tied feet will definitely be there. And there's Jenna Kingsley going back to Gawthrop who got clipped by Cass Davis and again the referee waves it away. Again, and again, the Walls End fans aren't happy, as they would Laura, Laura Hall now. And gets away from two tackles. Davis and then Squires, and then plays a perfect ball to Jenna Kingsley. Casey Smith's in the middle. Kingsley towards Smith, and Smith couldn't get on the end of it. Well, she could, but not well enough, and it's wide for a goal kick. A lot better from Walls End. You see, there we had three or four players driving into that box trying to meet that cross rather than just leaving Holcomb just by herself in there trying to get on the end of one cross with four Warners Bay defenders. So it was a lot better attack from Walls End. There's Bryony Holcomb now up the ground by Warners Bay and Sophie O'Brien heads back. So it's not to go back to Saunders.
to square a ball there. Easy for Cass Davis to intercept. Here's Adriana Jones on the angle on the right. She cuts back, she's got Kelly Lewis and she goes in towards the near post and Beck Saunders makes a good save. Into the final 20 minutes now. And Cass Davis has a speculator from distance and Beck Saunders punches it over the bar. But that, that just came from nowhere, Cass Davis. Saw her off her line. Great eyes decided. there from Cass Davis. Great save from Beck Saunders as well. But Cass saw Beck off the line, saw her outside a six-yard box and just... It was a well-executed shot. Beck did well to get back to get a hand to it. Is the script being written for a Wall's End equaliser? One they've had some chances, some big ones, to get the 2-0 lead. They haven't. You just sense Wall's End, maybe. Get that equaliser. Yeah, well, this is probably the first time in the last five or ten minutes or so that Warners Bay have actually looked like they're going to attack the ball and hopefully they can start gaining some more possession and get a real good control on this game. So it's Adriana Jones again from the corner. Whips it in, up they rise. Cass Davis and Seaborn were there too. And Casey Smith with the long ball while well, it was well intercepted. And that was uh, Sean Keating from the under 18s has come in to the side for Warners Bay. She also came in on the grand final last year as well for Valentine, so repeat for her. Here's Jones with a touch from Davis, cutting inside with that space. Good tackle from uh, the number 12 for Walls and Laura Hall. The free kick goes Warners Bay's way. Cass Davis fouled. Another good chance for Warners Bay. Yeah, we've also got the uh, MacArthur Rams on board today. So a shout out to the under 18s for MacArthur Rams girls. Well done. So Cass Davis is going to stand over this free kick. Adriana Jones. Furthest from screen in the Warners Bay, the number 13. I'm not sure if she is the tallest. Kelly Lewis is fairly tall as well. Kelly Lewis just 19. Adriana Jones 20. This one whipped in. So fine there from Cass Davis and it's over. Kelly Lewis with five goals in her 16 appearances. Been crucial for Warners Bay this season. The ball comes back and the sideline to Jenna Kingsley. Goes back to Jones and Squires. Calm in the middle of the park. Holds off Copas Brown. Still Squires. Now Jones with the interception. Hall. Again down that right hand side with some space for Laura Hall. Cross to Kingsley. Kingsley looking for Smith at the back post. Dita with the save and she just pushes it out to Early Davis. But Casey Smith was almost there. Bryony Holcomb gives Jenna Kingsley the thumbs up. Says we'll have some more of those. Thank you very much. And unfortunately missed opportunity for Walls End and a quick turnaround for AJ on the run. Here's Kelly Lewis taking it down towards the corner. Good interception. Well, it was a good interception at the back from Hunter. And now Lewis plays across to Jones, who skied it. Over for a goal kick. It's end-to-end -end stuff now. But Jenna Kingsley, she's standing right against that far sideline, making sure she can use all the width of this pitch up here at Weston. It was a great transition, though, by Warners Bay, straight up the other end to create another goal-scoring opportunity. It was well done by Ellie Davis to bring it out from the back. It's a big header from Sean Keating. Callista Hunter just possessed a moment ago and now she puts it over the sideline. We tick into the final 15. They're running out of time, Walls End, to find an equaliser. But with Jenna Kingsley down that right, you always sense they could grab one. Warners Bay as well with Adriana Jones in an instant. She could break and score and wrap it all up. Last placed last season, Warners Bay. Finished last. Warners Bay.
Bay are just giving Walls End way too much space to play out from the back there. If they want to gain control of the ball and start attacking a little bit more, they need to stop them playing out from that back line. Gilly Gawthrop towards the back post where Casey Smith is, and Casey Smith couldn't control. Cleared down the middle, Libby Copas Brown is after, and Cass Davis on it now. to Jones again as she's done all afternoon cuts inside still Jones steps away from it one and two still Jones is this the grand final for Warners Bay it isn't she's put it wide it's another goal kick and Cass these these chances for Warners Bay they're stacking up aren't they they're just they not putting them away they definitely are all they need is that second goal like we said and it's nearly impossible for Walls End to come back from a 2 nil down defence though from Walls End, scrambled but yeah, got there in the end and I think they're going to start looking for that run to AJ now, so Here is Lewis bumps away from a couple and Callista Hunter with the clearance Now for Squires Davis again with a long range shot and Beck Saunders makes the grab I think you'll see a bit more of that from Cass. She's got a bit of space there now. She can turn on the ball and definitely be able to score from that range. Jenna Kingsley to Gawthrop. Plays it low towards Kingsley and it runs down and over the sideline. Would be an impressive story if either of these two sides were to win. For Warners Bay, as I mentioned, last place last season. 13 points from there, 21 matches. And for Walls End, they finished fourth this year. How many sides finish fourth and win a grand final? Here's Kingsley. She's got Smith in the middle. Smith with the header and it's blocked, I think. It came off feet from Maddie Thornton there. And Dieter's there again. Unbeatable. Across the last two matches so far, Dieter didn't concede against Merriweather in the second leg. And not so this afternoon either. You just sense it's going to be Kingsley crossing into Smith or Briny Holcomb for, yeah. for their goal. Wall yeah, then. definitely. We've got Sean Keating, the youngster out there, on on an experienced W League player. So it, it's it'll be an interesting match for the two. There it is. Copas Brown rises oh, and Dita. Dita with the punch. Gawthrop. Maddie Thornton gets a boot in there. But what a pinpoint ball that was from Jenna Kingsley. She put that on a dime and Copas Brown just couldn't get on the end of it. Yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, Libby's not one of the tallest players in the team. I was, was going to say that. Um, yeah, just short. If it was Bryony Holcomb, maybe it goes in. Yeah, for sure. But you can see the lift now in the Wills End team. They're starting to uh, want that ball and, and go for goal. So... Walls in with the throw. Coming down to take it is Alice Munro. She throws in to Holcomb. And Holcomb gets around a couple. Plays it in towards the middle. Squires with the clearance over the head of Casey Smith. It was a good clearance from Squires. Now the ball in towards the middle. Kelly Lewis, well, it just runs into her path. Just checking with Adriana Jones as she was back doing some defensive work. But now Cass Davis. Warners Bay with their speedsters up front. Davis plays it inside to Lewis. Davis makes the run. Lewis goes with the outside of the boot. And the tired leads are starting to kick in because you can see there's only three moving up for for Warners Bay and uh, the defence was overloaded for Walls End. So the transition now is important between their defence and attack and the one that can overload and move quickly will, will probably score. So uh, this is happening with Walls End at the moment. Here's Holcomb almost finding Kingsley. What would you do if you were Leon Davis, Cass? Would you get your side to sit back? Um, yeah, well, I would look to change formation probably, um, but very wary of uh, Jenna. Um, maybe made some man changes, so put an experienced player out on Jenna and still sit four at the back that probably push more on because if they can get a second goal, then they're unbeatable. So it's a fi again a fine line. Callie Lewis comes off. Been good this afternoon. And it's Taylor Smith who's back onto the ground. She played her juniors at Adamstown. There's a few Adamstown Rosebuds juniors. Very big 
WPL club, Adamstown Smith. To Gawthrop, she finds some space out there for Ashley Jones. And again, they're heading down that right side for Jenna. And yeah, Jones towards Kingsley, but Sean Keating, unexperienced, as he said, Jenna Kingsley, she has done a fantastic job so far. Yeah, definitely. She's a Macquarie junior. She came through uh, the program at Macquarie and um, Valentine last year and now Bonners Bay this year. It's turning on the speed through the middle was Hunter. She goes wide to Kingsley. Is this Wall's End's chance? Kingsley towards the back post. Smith almost there and it was just a bit heavy, but Smith... Run that one down in front of Ellie Davis and the throw goes Wall's End's way. Munro comes down to take it. She goes quickly to Copus Brown. The outside of the boot squires with the header away. And Davis just couldn't control. Hall. Squires again. Cleared up to Seaborn. Now Taylor Smith. Now Cass, I was saying to Emily before when you were going, when you headed downstairs about we've got to come up with a player of the match for this game. Just see the run here from Seaborn. Across to Jones. Jones is this a chance for Warners Bay. Still with Jones. Cross the face. Almost shanked in for Wall's End. And there again, there's only two players in there for Warners Bay. Uh, whilst they dominate in there, definitely heavily defence from Wall's End, which have turned it around and now move forward. So, uh, player of the match. There's been a few consistencies out there. So, uh, Squires, I think, has dominated for Warners Bay in that central area. And again, Keeley's always strong, but um, your defence for Walls End, yourself, Sophie and Callistas, as well as Laura Rapley. So, um, the defence usually never get a, an eye in for a, a player of the match. So, it's nice to always recognise or reward those players. The yellow card coming out for Gawthrop. Almost into the final five minutes of the 2016 WPL Grand Final. Sass Seaborn with the goal. It was a very, very scrappy goal. But Warner's Bay will take it. Nadia Squires. She has been very, very good this afternoon. I think her and Dieter, the goalkeeper, probably between those two at the moment. Player of the match, there's the header. Beck Saunders makes the save at the near post. And Saunders, over towards Keating, who gets a boot in there, Sean Keating. Ashley Jones, cross to Kingsley. Jenna Kingsley, she hoofs it towards the middle of the ground. Copus Brown was, Holcomb and Casey Smith as well. And now Davis. Bringing it wide across to Thornton. Goes to Seaborn. Still Seaborn. Sass Seaborn gets a little clip to Jones. Are they going to play advantage? She's put it wide. And it's a yellow card coming out for Callista Hunter. So I don't think she was playing advantage there, the referee. No, it was a clumsy challenge from... There. If, if that goes in from Adriana Jones, do you think that would have been given? From I don't think so. I think she'd already blown a whistle by that point. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good position for Warners Bay to have a free kick with people like Nadia Squires and Cass Davis. To take a free kick from there, they can definitely score off this free kick. Did you guys think there was going to be more goals this afternoon? It's hard to know. Like, in these conditions... Um, with it being so hot, it has been a bit of an arm wrestle. It's been quite a physical game and, you know, grand final nerves can make anything happen. So you never really know whether there's going to be a lot of goals or a tight game. Yeah, I actually had two one balls in, so it was interesting. There's only going to be one or two goals in it, not much. Uh, so we've got a red wow. card. Was this something she said here to the referee? Callista Hunter, emotional as she's leaving the ground. Has she said something to the referee? Or she did get I the yellow card as the referee just realised. Yeah, so 
It was a very light red card for a yeah, second Yeah, certainly, yellow. Alison. I think that's who's refereeing today missed the, the yellow card and she's looked at her book and noticed that she's had the second, so automatic reds for that. So if Cass gets uh, a hold of this one, she'll go top left or right. Um, if they create a gap for her, she'll go low and hard down the bottom. Well, here's Davis. She goes towards yep. the top right corner and puts it wide. And it's going to be very, very tough for Wolves End now. So we're inside the final three minutes. Yeah, definitely. Again, this is crunch time for goals being scored. So if Wolves End really need to lift and get a move forward and create that opportunity, otherwise Warners Bay will just... Um, I think the only issue for Wall's End is if they do grab a goal extra time, they're going to be down to 10. Exactly so right. It's going to make them very hard for that extra time. So it probably is not much of an issue now in terms of they're probably going to play three at the back. They'll probably keep it that way. Seaborn towards the middle. Over for a corner for Warners Bay. It's all going Warners Bay's way now. Can they seal it? Can they seal it? Oh, there's a good chance they can. I would probably send all my players up for this one. Um, there's no, there's no risk if they do um, for them to move this quickly up the end of the park. I, I very much doubt it. But then again, but yeah, could send most, nearly all my players up. Here it goes in towards the near post. Back to Squires. Goes to Davis. Looks like it'll be straight to Saunders. Goes, floats wide from Ellie Davis. A reminder, we will stick around post-match for the presentation for whoever does win. That's Warner's Bay. Looks to be their day at this point. They scored one goal in the 18th grand final. Thornton scored eight, but they've scored one here. And it looks to be enough at the moment. Sean Keating under pressure from Kingsley. She's won that battle. Hands down, Sean Keating with Jenna Kingsley since she's come on the ground. There's Adriana Jones under pressure from Munro. She goes back to Davis, goes up and over the top. Smith, and we've got an offside against Smith. Tick down into the final minute of regulation time in the grand final. Charging after is Copas Brown. Munro. Gawthrop, strong challenge with Smith. Now Davis gets a little bit of a clip from Hall. Wide to Jones. Hasn't scored this afternoon, but has caused plenty of headaches and wins a corner for Warners. But that's smart play, isn't it? Experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, we may be seeing the last play of the game here, depending on how it goes. They, Adriana may just drag it out for that last 30 seconds. Yeah, so there you go. We've got the time, it's full time now, so she may just kick the ball and call it full time. And Jones will come in and take the corner. Looks like it's going to be and short. I'd, I'd say that's Ash saying to Adriana, just take your time, let's just yep, run the clock down. It goes Wall's End's way this time. Well, the free kick it is. It's gone Wall's End's way. All that attack from Wall's End in the last two matches. Seven goals in the last two matches in the semis. And there it goes. Counts for naught on grand final day because it's Warners Bay's day. They win their first WPL grand final up here at Western this afternoon. It was a scrappy goal from Sass Seaborn, but it's a goal they'll save up. Warners Bay won. Walls End nil this afternoon at Rockwell Automation Park. And Cass, really, it was an arm wrestle this afternoon, and Warners Bay won it. Yeah, definitely. Um, a, lot, a lot of hard work. And Warners Bay, like you said, were consistent throughout the year. And Consistency uh, obviously got them there. Yeah. Reward for the girls that lost the grand final last year, Bernardia and Cassidy. And 
and um, yeah, unfortunately, um, the World's End just didn't quite get there in the end. Well, we're going to catch the goal from South Seaborn right now. We are going to stick around for the presentation, as I mentioned, so stick around. So we're going to have a look at that goal now from Seaborn. Very scrappy, the ball bouncing around the penalty area. Saunders couldn't quite grab it. And I was thinking at the start of the game when Louis Copas Brown had the penalty saved by Dieter, I thought we might have a goal fest this afternoon. But in the end, for Wall's End, that was their chance. That was their moment to go ahead 1 0. Wasn't taken, well saved by Nicky Dieter. Yeah, the, the uh, Warner's Bay keeper had a really good game today, and um, that definitely showed on the scoreline where a clean sheet where she had. So. Six players from Valentine last year in the grand final winning side this afternoon. Lose heartache last year and this year I'll be very, very pleased with that result. Finished second, so deserving victors. Wills End had a one, they finished the season in fourth. You would have sort of felt a little bit uneasy about that. Fourth place winning the grand final. That, that's new to uh, WPO with the home and away finals too. It gives the, the opportunity for those teams that came second or third or fourth to actually have that opportunity taking over the premiers and that's exactly what ha happened unfortunately for them this year. <laughs> yeah, but every side apart from over the last year that has won the minor premiership hasn't gone on to win. It is a, it is a stat and a half. Yeah, and um, it was unfortunate that that happened last year, but um, yeah, well done to Merriweather. They were still consistent this year, finishing the top four. Change of players, I think there was, um, again, and we talked about the depth of the 18s and, and helping out with the WPL side, and I don't think their 18s were quite there either. Um, so that always, say, always helps, because as you have a look at Warner's Bay's bench, is uh, full of 18s backing up, and Sean was was uh, definitely their captain from the 18s came on and was able to, to hold her own out there. And she was brilliant on, on Jenna Kingsley and good to see the Wolves End players going over to the far corner of the ground to thank their fans for this afternoon's match. What do you, what do you think they lacked this afternoon, Wolves End? A striker up front, maybe. Th that actual power and, and that the AJ equivalent to, to Wolves End. So if, if they had that, I think there it would have been a... a high score uh, definitely in the game but yeah lacking up front and Craig did mention that to me and, and Walls End were lacking um, that fire up front and um, definitely I would that be the first thing I'd be recruiting next year for uh, their side for sure because they've got the depth in the throughout the back and the central but missing that that those couple of quick strikers up front to, to support Jenna. Now Emily in terms of the WPL for next year in terms of the amount of sides, uh, from what you've heard, is it going to be seven again next season? The same yeah, sides? I think after adding the clubs that they d like, they obviously did a big recruiting with Walls End, South Walls End, and Warners Bay. I don't think they'll be inclined to add a club next year. It just depends on whether the clubs meet the requirements for having a WPL team and whether they have that junior base, so those 14s, 16s, 18s, to be able to support having a first grade side as well. So at this stage, I haven't heard any whispering, but um, I can't imagine it happening by next year. Yeah, of course, there was eight teams last season, but Valentine dropped out after uh, they, uh, well they, they couldn't uh, afford to run the two sides with the NPL side as well this season. It's a bit disappointing that uh, they were finished after last season's uh, grand final defeat to Merriweather. So we're just awaiting the presentation this afternoon. I'll we'll just go through the ladder of the NPL this season in terms of where these two sides finished in terms of points and, and victories. Adamstown with uh, at the, the top, the minor premiers, 46 points from their 18 matches, 15 wins, a draw and two losses. The Warners Bay, 18 matches, they played 12 wins, two draws, four losses, 38 points. So Warners Bay, they, they weren't as far as, as what it seemed from, from you guys up the top, Emily. No, and I 
think definitely like we had a really good run from the start to the middle of the season. I think the loss against Warners Bay and Merriweather within that space of a week, it really, um, I think it lifted them to be able to beat us and then continue on in the manner that they did for the rest of the season. So I think by the end of it, like, I don't think any team out of the top four were really that far away from each other. Like There were crucial victories at t certain times, but when you look at the quality across the park for all of the four, top four teams, there really wasn't that much difference between them all. Yeah, it was Merriweather in third spot. They were the minor premiers last year, of course. 18 matches, 11 wins, two draws, five losses. What do you think happened to Merriweather this year, Cass, after the fantastic year they had last season? Yeah, not too sure. Unfortunately, I didn't get out to too many games this year to have actually have a look. Um, it's, it's always hard when you've won a grand final, isn't it, to get back up again. You, you've, you've won the holy grail, the one thing you, you you want to win, and it's hard to get back up after Yeah, it, but again, you've got to have the depth in the players to do that as well. Uh, they definitely didn't have the depth. Uh, there's a few key change uh, of players that, that they lost, and, and that was obviously enough not to get them into... Uh, today's game so um, it, it really does make a difference unfortunately with these teams those a couple of good players can be the difference between finals and no final and in fourth of course Wall's End on the ladder 18 matches nine wins so they only won half of their matches three draws six losses 30 points for the season South Wall's End they came home for them four wins and 14 losses no draw was impressive from Thornton not drawing any matches and they finished on 12 points and then Mid North Coast very disappointing you know wins and two draws 16 losses do you know what the go is with Mid North Coast Cass yeah and that was the talk we were having a earlier about um, unfortunately Mid North Coast can't keep girls over the age of 18 so um, they are a little bit isolated that far up. Uh, their development squads in the younger younger ages are quite good, and hence that's why they had two teams in, 14s and 16s, both in the finals today. Um, and when they get to the 18th, they start to dwindle and, and go to uni or head down uh, south for work. So unfortunately, they can't keep girls over that age, and it's very hard for them to get people to travel up. So if you're going to travel an hour or two to play football, you'll probably head to Sydney now. So... Um, where a lot of the strong teams in the uh, New South Wales competition hold. So, again, hard for them, but the junior ranks are quite strong. So I don't know how they're going to combat that uh, next year or in a couple of years because, unfortunately, their players then come down to the Emerging Jets or, or WPL clubs. And do you think that could be an issue for years to come for Mid-North Coast? Yeah, definitely. Um, again, uh, there are a lot of... Uh, they do draw on the further uh, clubs up or associations like your far north, north inland um, and other areas. But the travel for um, a young girl and their parents is, is quite hefty because it's so far, definitely. And Emily, on yourself, you're playing for Adamstown again next year. You're not going anywhere else? Uh, if they'll have me, I guess. I go to trial like everyone else does. And, um you know, I played with a great bunch of girls this season. I couldn't um, speak more highly of the season that we had. It'll just be a wait and see for next year. Here we go down. David Elam has the mic, so let's go down and listen to him.
a full play. The first goal is going to be very unlucky in this game. It's an old school game, but you know he's going to hold the net. That's going to be Preston Blank. The right one is going to be Jack Sagan. The players have done uh, most of the time for the last few games. Tim for Europa, who is going to assist with the new presentation and the presentation of Turkey. I'd just like to thank Weston for hosting tonight. Could you please put your hands together for Weston? You've done an absolutely sensational job. We don't think I've seen uh, so many volunteers here tonight. Uh, they've been fabulous folks. So I'd appreciate your hands in. And every single one of the volunteers here tonight, thank you so much, Weston, for hosting such a successful night. We've had a, a big crowd here. Just over 1,600 people for our grand final day in Turkey. I'd also like to thank the Hall, the Newcastle Hall, who has supported women's football in the Women's football is uh, a very important part of our game. We're almost up to 22 Our total readiness of players are females now, and the game just keeps growing every single year. So thank you to all our female participants. <laughs> Going to start with our match officials. Uh, and today, if you didn't notice, all four games were officiated by female match officials, which is, again, uh, a really good indication of how the game is going. I want to thank Greg Carlin for his appointments right throughout the year. We're going to recognise our match officials to start with. Our centre referee today was Alison McGreedy. Well done, Alison. The first, the first grade fixture is always a lot of pressure, very difficult to officiate. Alison did a fantastic job today. Well done, Alison. Alison was assisted by Megan Holgate. And Lisa Fraser. And the fourth official today was Samantha Chapman. Well done to the match officials for your appointments today. Your appointments are reflective of your performance right throughout the year, so well done. Thanks 
sending today, guys. Um, and lastly, I just want to thank Mark Higson, awesome coach this year, he's worked wonders and he pulled, pulled us all together and yeah, super happy about that. And also Jason Strat, what an awesome club to play for, thank you for the support, everybody. Uh, please thank Walls End once again. Great season, Grand Finals 2016. Well done, Walls End. I'd now like to invite Cassidy Davis up, the captain of Warners Bay. Grand final win. So for this one, I'd just like to thank Zen. Uh, it was an awesome game. Made it very hard. You've always been the toughest team all season and congratulations for making the final. I'd like to thank Western for having us here, uh, Northern New South Wales Football, um, the Herald and all the supporters. Um, and I'd like to thank Waters Bay, uh, everyone behind the scenes to put it up together. Um, and I'd like to thank the staff, Leon, Fran, Kim, Jeff. Thanks everyone. So.
So there they are, Warners Bay, the Premiers, the major Premiers for 2016 with the trophy. Must feel good for six of them last year that went down to win a grand final this year. You must be happy for, happy for them, Cass. Yeah, definitely. It was very disappointing last year. Um, but it, again, for these girls that have worked hard and continue to, um, it's really pleasing to see a smile on their face after a win today. Now, player of the match. Cass Davis just said Nikki, Nikki Dieter, but we thought Nadia Squires was the, the player of the match yeah, this afternoon. Yeah, Nadia worked hard in that central. She actually controlled it. Um, and, and therefore, I think that that's the winning tip for me. Uh, whilst the keeper uh, did the amazing saves that she did, especially that dotty in the first first couple of uh, plays. Um, yeah, definitely with Nadia. Uh, she is a favourite of mine, so a <laughs> bit biased there. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I definitely agree with that as well. Well, thanks so much to you two for coming up here and doing this commentary today. It's a long trip up to Western, so thanks so much for being up here for this grand final. It's Warner's Bay's day this afternoon with the 1-0 win over Walls End. So hopefully next year there's some extended coverage of the WPL. Excellent, and thanks again to Bar TV for putting it on. We had quite a, quite a few uh, amazing comments last year from the coverage, and uh, again, we've gone worldwide today as well as Australia-wide, so well done for you guys for doing that because the more uh, football that's put on uh, live coverage, one of my coaches is sitting there with her feet up watching on telly today. She's put on a screen, and, th and that's an amazing thing for uh, women's football. Like David, David Aylan said out there that 22% um, now of Northern New South Wales are women, so... Um, it's great to see, and it's definitely a growing game. Exactly, and uh, it'll only make the, the national team stronger as well, the Matildas, so, and they're doing great things as well. So Warners Bay this afternoon, the victors, just before we head off next weekend. Plenty coming up on Bar TV in terms of football coverage. We've got 2 p.m. next Saturday, Edgeworth and Maitland. That one's at two all at the moment, so that should be a cracking semi-final out at Edgeworth. Then at 6.30, we head to Hamilton Olympics, home ground at Darling Street. They went down 3-1 to Broadmeadow Magic today. They can have it all to do next week. Should be a ripper. And then next Sunday, we've got the new FM Grand Final at Edgeworth. So what a weekend it'll be next week. But at Warners Bay, what a performance this afternoon at Rockwell Automation Park. Full time, it was Warners Bay 1, Walls End 0.